What's up everyone, I'm Callum Montos, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some crazy battles submitted to the channel by Trixie Bella, who's running the Forces of Nature trio in their Therian forms with Landorus, Thunderous, and Tornadus. And it's worth mentioning that Landorus was of course nerfed this season with Mudshot generating less energy, but Tornadus has access to Astonish, which obviously got a big buff this season, and it gives it way better coverage against the Master League meta compared to Gust. Now I believe all three of these Pokemon are Hundos, and two of them are actually Shundos, which is insane luck, but anyways, let's just get into the question of the day. What has been your favourite buff Pokemon to use in the Open Master League this season? Let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so going into the first battle here, leading into Rhyperia, so a great lead matchup for us, and I'm not super familiar with the Master League, but I do believe this is just a level 40 Rhyperia here. I don't have a clue what elo these battles at, they were all cropped, so you don't actually see that screen before we go into the battle, but either way, going to swap out there as the opponent just goes straight for a Breaking Swipe, which of course, we definitely don't need to shield. We're now going to shield this as the opponent goes for a Dragon Claw, and then just fire off the Wild Bolt Storm straight away, and if you don't know, like Sansa Storm, all of these signature moves do have the guaranteed chance to debuff the opponent's attack, so at this point we can probably live a Dragon Claw, I believe this is also a level 40 Dragonite, so we get the full farm down there, and we're going to go straight for the Focus Bar, into Rhyperia coming back in. Do they respect the damage? They don't. It one-shots the Rhyperia. And we're going to swap into Tornadus. And this is a prime example of where Astonish is just so much better in terms of coverage. Of course, a Steel-type Pokemon would be resisting the Gust damage. You can see we're committing to the Focus Pass, but unfortunately, the opponent does concede the match, but we're able to take that game. Into next battle, awful lead for us as we see a Kyogre get a safe swap into Tornadus. And do they know about the Focus Pass coverage? Once again, full sending it. And Focus Pass gets the one-shot up against the Dialga. Get that Dialga off my screen, as Jamie Finn would say. They come back in with Kyogre, and we're still able to make it to a Bleak Wind Storm. So that's huge for us. Grabbing a shield there, as we've just nuked a Dialga. So they're definitely going to respect the damage this time around. And now we can align our Thunderous to this Kyogre. Things are looking great. Going to shield anyways. They are debuff, but of course Surf, whilst it does cost more energy this season is also going to deal more damage. At this point, this is just going to be a Fire Punch, so we're going to no-shield this. I quite like the play, actually, of banking the Wild Bolt Storm and then swapping out there. We can now come in with our Landorus. We are going to no-shield once again. Fire Punch, not going to do much damage there. Going to go and fire off the Sandseer Storm, and Sandseer Storm also not going to do that much damage, but it does drop their attack, and it will put them into range where a second Sandseer Storm will get the KO. So they go for the Fire Punch there. We are going to go for the Sandseer Storm straight away. I personally would have overfarmed, but actually the Switch Shot will be coming up in time so it doesn't really matter we can just come in straight away with the thunderous fire off the wild bolt storm wild bolt storm grabs the final shield and we're able to make it to a second one gonna fully undercharge it just for the sake of it it actually doesn't get the ko there but the opponent stops attacking we get the volt switch farm down and we're able to take that game He's the next battle. We're going to see a mirror match here. Very tricky one, of course. Stone Edge going to deal some pretty decent damage in this matchup. Sansa Storm will be debuffing the attack, but it does do very little damage. So, a bit risky to bait in this matchup. But either way, we are going to no shield the first move, then swap and catch the next charge move. I'm not so sure about that, especially since they bait with the Sand Storm. That is awful. But they come in with the Alga, and can we land another Focus Pass? We are debuffed. Unfortunately, the opponent throws at perfect timing there, throwing just as we make it to the Focus Pass. We're going to shield. We just want to get the Focus Pass off. Focus Pass coming through, and even debuff, it takes out the Alga there. But we are, of course, down two shields in this matchup. They come in with Necrozma, and we are just barely able to make it to the Bleak Wind Storm, and that's huge for us. Once again, they've seen the Focus Pass, so they're going to shield and then we make the combo play swapping back into Landorus probably going to grab the final shield from the opponent we do grab that final shield they come back in with their own Landorus and we will make it to a Sansa Storm of course this will not get the KO it will debuff their attack though and it puts them into range where we can actually f uh, Volt Switch farm them down with our Thunderous as the opponent goes for the Stone Edge there guaranteeing the KO we get the Volt Switch farm down and this is actually great for us because of course Sun Steel Strike is resisted damage up against an Electric type Pokemon so the opponent has to go for a Dark Pokemon Dark Pulse doesn't get the KO. It looks like a CMP tie, which Thunderous wins. And again, Focus Pass gets the one shot up against the Crossbow. I think we even made that into slow motion there, which is pretty cool. But either way, we take that game. 
Now into the next battle, we're going to see Giratina in the lead. So going straight for Sansa Storm. Sansa Storm doesn't really do much damage there, but it does mean that we will be able to tank a Shadow Ball reasonably comfortably as well. We're now going to swap into our Tornadus, and they come in with a Togekiss. So just going to fire off the Bleak Wind Storm straight away. Of course, up against a three-turn move, Astonish uh, up against Charm. There's no perfect timing here. You do just want to throw that charge move as soon as possible. This time around, it looks like we throw on CMP, which is great for us. The opponent shields that up. We're also going to shield this. Looks like we're fighting hard for switch advantage. I suppose we don't really want our Thunderous up against the Giratina there. But either way, going to fire off the Bleak Wind Storm. And either we grab the final shield from the opponent, or we get the KO, and we win switch advantage. And we get switch advantage. And that's going to be huge, as they've got Kyogre in the back. So we are going to go straight for the Wild Bolt Storm here, of course. Not perfect timing, but I guess we kind of just want to debuff their attack as soon as possible. We then swap into Landorus, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But then the opponent also swaps out into their Giratina. I am very confused as to what just happened there. I think it was just a case of like, I swap, you swap kind of thing. But either way, we are going to shield up the Ominous Wind, which is a bit unfortunate. But either way, we kind of had to shield there. We're going to farm up two back-to-back -back Wildbot Storms. This is definitely the right play here. First one gets the KO. We can fire off the next Wildbot Storm into the Kyogre coming back in. At Wildbot Storm, actually doesn't quite get the KO there. Kyogre hangs on with a slither of HP. And Surf will unfortunately get the KO. And we do end up losing that game. But into the next battle, we're going to see a Palkia swapping in as they led with Rhyperia in the lead. So just going to shield this up here. I personally would have gone for the Sansir Storm straight away. But instead, just going to back the energy. Come in with our Thunderous. We're able to make it to the Wild Bolt Storm here. Wild Bolt Storm is going to grab a shield from the Palkia. You can see the Dragon Breath damage is seriously chunking though. At this point, we're going to double shield here, and we're going to over farm, and that's a huge mistake there, as the opponent does reach another charge move. They go for the Aquatel, get in the KO, and we're not in a great position, but they're going to swap back into their Rhyperia, so we are going to over farm there, then swap, make a very nice combo play once again, swapping into Landorus, going for the Sansir Storm, grabbing the shield from the opponent, and at this point, we might even live a Rock Wrecker here. The opponent goes for Rock Wrecker, and it doesn't get the KO. We make it to another Sansir Storm, and this will get Rhyperia very very low, it gets them into the deep he red health range there, and they're forced to throw a charge with us, otherwise we're resisting the monster damage, we could probably farm them down, and then they come in with Zarude, and we're going straight for Focus Bars once again, Focus Bars actually doesn't get the one shot, but the resistant Astonish is able to get the farm down there, and we're coming out with close to a Bleak Wind Storm already loaded, one more Astonish, we get there, Bleak Wind Storm gets the KO, and we can just Astonish, farm down Rhyperia to take that game. Into the next battle, we can see Machamp in the lead. So we will outpace them to a Sandseer Storm before they make it to a Stone Edge. But the opponent is going to throw on CMP here. So at this point, we're going to No Shield. They just go for a Cross Shot, which doesn't really make sense whatsoever. At this point, we're going to swap here, maybe trying to catch the next cross chop. Although, if they do go for Stone Age this time around, then that is a little bit risky. But nope, they go for another cross chop, so don't really know why they did that. Either way, they're going to come in with a Melmetal, which is not ideal. But Rockside, going to deal less damage this season, of course. And we will just barely make it to the Focus Bars. Once again, can we connect this? Focus Bars gets the one shot up against the Melmetal. And they come in with a Gyarados. So at this point, this is probably game over. Going to fire off the Bleak Wind Storm here. And then all we have to do is just let them farm us down or fire off a charge move either way it's fine and they do fire off the charge move so get a no shield they go for crunch which gets the ko there but we can come in with the thunderous get the vault switch farm down they come back in with machamp and at this point you can see we are being updated that means the opponent has conceded the match and we're able to take that game and it's the next battle awful lead matchup for us the worst thing we could possibly see with this team as unfortunately, Mamo Swine is going to take resisted damage, well, double resisted damage from the Thunderous, also hitting for super effective damage up against the entire team, and as well hitting for double super effective damage up against Landorus. So, this is definitely our best matchup. Luckily for us, the opponent is staying in, but it's still not a good matchup for us. We can at least make it to back to back Bleak Wind Storms, although not throwing at the best timing there, so actually giving them more Powder Snows in for free, which isn't ideal especially in an already very bad matchup. But either way, we have put them into range where we can just fire off a Sansa Storm, just barely outpacing them, and a Sansa Storm from this range gets the KO. And they're going to come in with a Gyarados. So we swap into our Thunderous. And the opponent's got a Dragonite in the back. So this is going to be very close here. We go straight for Wild Bolt Storm. Wild Bolt Storm does some decent damage there. But it doesn't quite put them into farm down range. And that is very unfortunate. The opponent goes for Dragon Claw. Which we do hang on to because we have debuffed their attack. But unfortunately we have to throw a Charge Reef here. I personally would have tried to undercharge that. And then maybe try to commit to a Mud Shot farm down. But unfortunately the opponent can just Waterfall farm us down. Coming out with an Aquatel loaded. Aquatel does 
doesn't quite take us out there, but we're not able to make it to the Stone Edge, so they're able to waterfall farm us down and take that game. Into the next battle to see Rhyperia in the lead once again. The opponent safe swaps into Yveltal, and we're going to go into our Thunderous. Shield the first move as they go for a Dark Pulse here. Going to overfarm just slightly. Fire off the Wild Bolt Storm here. Wild Bolt Storm, we're actually going to go for a slight undercharge there. Grabs the shield anyways, and they throw it on very poor timing. It looks like they tried to throw on CMP, but either way, we can just shield that and go for a full farm down. And can we land another Focus Blast up against a Rhyperia? They're coming back in. We are full sending it once again. Focus Blast gets the one shot from literally full health that time around. Insane damage. They're going to come in with a Pre-Marina, and this is a little bit tricky for us. We're actually going to swap into our Landris, which seems like such a strange decision here. But Hydro Cannon doesn't quite take us out, and that actually ends up being the perfect play because we go them very little farm but we still make it to the sand seer storm so actually never mind that worked out perfectly for us we can now come in with our tornadoes go for a bleak wind storm bleak wind storm is going to double debuff their attack now and we're able to astonish farm them down to take that game into next battle, we're going to see Melmetal in the lead, so definitely a very positive matchup for us, although unfortunately, they do outpace us to the charge moves now, because of course Mudshot generates energy slightly slower, but it does deal more damage, so by the time we've landed a Sandseer Storm, honestly, we can probably just farm them down, which isn't that bad. Either way, they're going to go for another Rockside there, Rockside not doing that much damage, we can fire off another Sandseer Storm here, Sandseer Storm doesn't quite get the KO, and actually, the opponent does make it to a final Rockside. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have shielded this, but either way, gonna shield up the rock side there. As of course, if we were planning on shielding one, I would have shielded the first one, but either way, it does allow us to make it to a Stone Edge, which grabs the final shield from the opponent. We swap out here. I personally would have just let the Landorus go down and then come in with the Thunderous, but either way, we're still looking okay. Gonna shield up the Ancient Power there, and the opponent swaps into Necrozma, and that is huge for us. Once again, we are going straight for the Focus Bars, dealing huge damage. Unfortunately, it is only neutral damage in this situation, but it doesn't matter. It's put them into Volt Switch Farm Down range. They fire off the Dark Pulse. That gets the KO, but it it doesn't matter. We get the Volt Switch farm down. We are going to swap into Landorus for no reason whatsoever. Now firing off the Wild Bolt Storm. Yeah, I don't really know why we did that. But either way, Wild Bolt Storm gets the KO up against the Togekiss. And we're able to take that game. In today's battle, we're going to see Palkit in the lead. And something I've noticed is that we like to go for one mud shot and then swap out, which is kind of interesting. It probably does slightly help with the pacing for Landris when it comes back in. Obviously, now, unfortunately, no longer five mud shots to a Sandseer Storm, but swapping out after already getting one mud shot off might actually help us there. But either way, we're going to bait out Necrozma, and this is actually amazing for us. Are we going to double shield here? Nope, going to let this go through. The opponent goes for Dark Pulse. We can come in with either Pokemon here. Uh, they are double debuffed, so that's good. But unfortunately, Sunseal Strike is still going to do big damage in this matchup. So we are going to no shield. The opponent goes for Sunseal Strike. That still does huge damage. But we do get the Mudshot farm down. They come back in with the Palkia. We're firing off the Sandseer Storm. Sandseer Storm is going to grab the final shield from the opponent, drop their attack, and we come in with our Thunderous. Now, we can't really afford to shield this, but we don't know what they've got in the back, and they've got a ground on, and this is very unfortunate, as they are going to double resist the Volt Switch damage. Focus Bars will connect, though, and it does do big damage up against the ground on, but unfortunately, this is not a great situation to be in, so going to no shield as they go for the Fire Punch. I think that probably is the right play here, but we need to farm up two back-to-back -back Charge moves, or as close as possible, two back-to-back -back Sandseer Storms. You see, we are one away, I think they would have made it to a charge move otherwise. So we go for Sandseer Storm, get the KO there, and unfortunately we don't make it to another Sandseer Storm, but I don't think Palkia would have gone down from that range anyways, so it doesn't really matter. But into the next battle, we see Groudon in the lead this time around, and that is a severely underleveled Groudon, but they are running Dragon Tail as a fast move, which is pretty interesting. We're going to shield this as the opponent is going to go for an Earthquake there, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And now they swap into Metagross, and once again, no, never mind. I was going to say, once again, are we going to go and full send a focus pass unfortunately we wouldn't quite get there in time so i don't mind that and we do grab a shield anyways the opponent goes for a psychic there so not running the right moves on any of their pokemon so far we get a full astonished farm down and they're going to come in with a kyogre so full sending the focus pass focus pass does huge damage and again another incredibly under leveled kyogre there and once again we will make it to another focus pass we actually accidentally over tap there i think we try to go for the focus pass but either way focus pass gets the ko we get the volt switch farm down and we're able to take that game 
I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but I have no clue what elo these battles are at. They, uh, they've all been cut out, so I can't see it. But either way, doesn't really matter. Still very entertaining battles so far. Gonna shield up and again go for Psychic. Not really sure why they're doing that, but either way, I guess it does help for like... I mean, you're not going to see many Gyarados, but maybe in the Master Premier Cup, uh, you might see some Gyarados where Psychic will actually be helpful as Meteor Mash and Earthquake are resisted, but either way, the opponent's just going to concede the match. I'd, I didn't even commentate over that battle. It was over so quickly. Into the next battle, we can see Dragonite in the lead. So we are going to shield up the Dragon Claw as it does make sense. As now we can go and fire off the Bleak Wind Storm, and this should allow us to live a second Dragon Claw if the opponent stays in this matchup, which they are staying in. So going to no shield this. I'm actually not certain if we will actually live the Dragon Breath damage here, but we are just barely able to do so, making it to another Bleak Wind Storm. Bleak Wind Storm is going to be no shielded by the opponent. It does get them into the red health range, but it puts them into Fault Switch farm down range for our Thunderous. Although actually, nope, we're gonna come in with our Landorus, so I'm not really sure about that. As we just can't farm them down here at all, but they swap into Kyogre. So now we're gonna come in with our Thunderous, and we're going straight for Wild Bolt Storm. That looked like a very good timing as well, which was quite good. Wild Bolt Storm gets the full one shot there, but again, they've got Groudon in the back. And whilst we've seen many Focus Blasts land up against Groudon, it's the Volt Switch damage which doesn't add up, which is gonna be costly here. We will make it to the Focus Blast, and Focus Blast, again, gonna do huge damage in this matchup. Get some deep into the red health range as the opponent doesn't shield, but they get a huge mud shot farm down which isn't ideal for us we can make it to a sand storm and grab a shield from the opponent but yeah this is gonna be very very difficult here this opponent goes for the fire punch they're gonna swap into dragonite and they will be able to go for a full dragon red farm down unless we make it to the sand storm but at this point the damage is done we're at one hp they can mud shot farm us down and unfortunately we do lose that game but into, I believe, the final battle of this video, once again leading into Melmetal. Gonna no shield as they go for a rock side there, and then they swap into Gyarados, so going straight for the Stone Edge here. The opponent tried to catch the Sansa Storm, that does huge damage! We actually could have just gone for a full Mudshot farm down there, but instead we snipe with our Thunderous. And at this point, are we gonna go for another Focus Fast? We absolutely are here. Focus Fast! is unfortunately shielded this time around. Honestly, from that range, yeah, we probably could have just gone for Wild Pot Storm. But either way, going to no shield. Rockside doesn't get the KO there. And we're going to over farm in this matchup. Go for an extra Volt Switch there. Then go for another Rockside. Gonna go for another Volt Switch here and throw on CMP. Gonna fully undercharge this as well. This should still get the KO. You've got actually shield set up there. So at this point, I definitely just let Thunderous go down. Rockside gets the KO. We can come in with either Pokemon. We come in with the Landorus. They come in with a Togekiss. We possibly could have gone for a Stone Edge there, but either way, gonna swap into our Tornadus, going straight for Bleak Wind Storm. Bleak Wind Storm is gonna do some decent damage, it drops their attack, they will make it to a charge move, but it doesn't really matter at this point. We can just safely shoot up the Ancient Power. We could fire off a Charge Roof, but instead, gonna go for the full Astonish Farm down. I think we're gonna try and commit to another Focus Fast, but the opponent can seize the match, and we're able to take that game. So that's gonna be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know, and as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you wanna see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you wanna take your support even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shout outs at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member. Your support is greatly appreciated and with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.